And we are back. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Mark from Mark My Words, and today we are covering Horizon Forbidden West. This is going to be the full review. If you haven't seen previously, I did a review in progress video not too long ago. Well, this is the full review. I have finally finished the game, and let's go. All right, first of all, sorry I'm a bit late to the party on this one. Definitely sunk a total of 23 hours, but today we're covering Horizon Forbidden West. This is a full spoiler review, so if you're still yet to finish the game, if you haven't played the game, this is your warning. If you're not too fast, then let's just jump right into it. All right, we are jumping back in the world of Aloy and Horizon to discover new machines and a new overall threat. After the events of the first game, Aloy has to search out to rebuild Gaia. This means her looking for parts of her AI that have now gained a mind of their own, such as Poseidon and Hephaestus. Yet, you soon find out you're not the only one on this mission. There's a new group called the Zeniths, and they are also trying to rebuild Gaia, and these people are super strong, force fields, I mean, they can damn fly. You find out these are actually the original humans that left Earth on this fake ship, faking that it exploded off-world, and here they are back with supreme technology, and there we go. Now, this is where the story really takes off, and this is actually one of my gripes. The main objective of the story, rebuilding Gaia, is super basic. Uh, they, they attempt to mix in the other tribes as similar to the first game as possible, but it just doesn't hit anywhere as hard or as personally. I feel like these characters in the tribes just didn't connect, and the side objectives, they just, I wanted to know more about the Zeniths. You really don't touch on the Zeniths until the last probably three hours of the game. You get a mission here and there where it covers it, but unfortunately, that's all the knowledge. It's locked behind about 16 to 18 hours of gameplay minimum in this story mission and I just wanted the juicy goss on the Zeniths. Anyway, characters just as I mentioned were super missable, story moments were pretty good with the highlights being the weather and the swimming and the stealth missions, hiding in terrifying waters with uh, the snap moors just tracking around you or taking on a huge tremor tusk in a snowy fields. So those are really the great moments. Notice how the gameplay, machines, and graphics are really the things I'm pointing out here. The story around it, there simply feels like there's just less at stake, and the mystery of the game is somewhat gone, apart from the Zeniths. You want to know about the Zeniths, but the mystery in the first game was really what had you compelled to keep going, but this one, the mystery's kind of gone, unfortunately. The ending is quite heartwarming, but loses its weight throughout the entire story, unfortunately. Now there are some new additions into this game with the skill tree expansion, obviously a lot of them can be overlooked but honestly the ones where you knock three arrows in one shot and you can shoot trap tripwise in the press of one button rather than shooting both and then having to wait for it to come up, all that's gone, there's certain skills that are really nice, there's also the addition of Valor, it's pretty much you hold down L1 and then press R1 and that allows you to choose some kind of technique. For example, I had the overshield that constantly you could put on and it comes back fairly quickly so it's really, really good to keep that in mind because it actually saves you quite a lot. Now, don't worry about getting skill points with this one. They might be pretty intimidating looking at all but if you do just a few side quests, you get skill points really quickly. Now, another thing that was addition that I swear to God was not in the first game, it's a bit of a gripe, but I swear, getting damaged by your own traps, that is a thing in this game and it sucked. So your own tripwise, if you go over them, they will activate and you will get your fire or shock damage depending on your tripwire. Or if you're just that little bit too close to one of your traps exploding, that's it. You get like full poisoned or something. It's, it really sucks and it's actually such a big pain. Now, the graphics in this game, as you can obviously see, are simply stunning. It's really what the open world game is all about. It takes the full use of the PS5 system. Obviously, if you bought the PS4 copy on the PS5, you get that free upgrade to the PS5 graphics. That is a fantastic addition to what they did. Now, everything just comes together in a beautiful package, and it's just fantastic to look at. Obviously, shout out to that photo mode if anyone's taking advantage of that. There is a lot to play around with. Now, the open worlds leading from forests, deserts to coastlines really are just stunning. Unfortunately, the coastline being the most beautiful of all three, 
Uh, maybe the winter wonderland type of area coming second, but the coastline, unfortunately, you really don't spend a lot of time there. I reckon you spend about an hour and a half story-wise, and there's a few side missions if you want to go over there as well, but I wanted more time and more reason to be on the coastlines. Now, let's go to gameplay. The gameplay, now you get this glider, which is super useful and which is fantastic early game. You slow down time with your concentration and then be able to get like precision shots on those machines, which is fantastic. However, Aloy's janky movements, which I really hope do get fixed in the long run, uh, kind of make some rough experiences. It's been a long time where Aloy just feels really slow and you got to dodge and sometimes facing these machines such as thunder jaws and everything they beat the hell out of you because of this it's actually really hard because you're you're quite slow but it's not similar to a dark souls method where you're slow but if you're mechanically smart you can get around no these machines will wail on you and that is really where the game becomes difficult now before i get to my overall review i just want to jump into the bugs now personally i got hit with a lot of bugs now i've realized not everyone has been unfortunate like myself to get hit with these a couple of my mates haven't really had one however i got really unlucky with a uh, bit swimming around getting stuck into a wall an invisible man attacking me and i just had to swing until i found him and just machines that would appear that wouldn't i wouldn't be able to see them but i'd be able to see the parts i could hit off very very weird oh and there's one instance of just an NPC appearing in thin air and then dropping down to the ground. Super weird, I know it's going to get patched but it was actually a fairly big negative for me, it pulled me out quite a few times just based on how many I got, but I am not going to be surprised if they if they fix this pretty early on. Now overall the story just could have been DLC for the first game, just personally I feel like if you got the story and condensed it to about more of a 10 to 12 hour game, really like pull down the guy stuff, add more about the Zeniths, that would have been a lot more interesting. But Unfortunately, Horizon Forbidden West just just misses its mark to me. I just I was hoping for more. Granted, I was a huge fan of the first game, so potential the hype for me kind of built up a bit too much. It just didn't deliver as much as I wanted. Now, the gorgeous graphics in the machines are really what you're here for. The amazing gameplay, the machines with incredible detail that are just super fun to fight, and the traversal world, which is just stunning. This is that. This is what you're here for. Unfortunately, the story is not that great, but the world that they've made is incredible. Now, unfortunately, with Horizon Forbidden West, I'm not going to hold my breath for a third run in this franchise, but I will play it regardless. Alright everyone, that was my review on Horizon Forbidden West. Some positives, some negatives, a bit of real life gameplay, here it is for you. I hope you all enjoyed, and of course, please jump on all sorts of social medias that are down in the link in the description, and go like and follow for those, I would really appreciate it. And if you like this video, please slap the like button. Give us a follow if you like it, and I might see you in the next one. See you later.